well that was really annoying just been to the market with four to six sheep um, and couldn't reverse the trailer very well well today although it was perfect last time but um, it's been a bit stressful morning nearly went off the road on the ice a few times so it wasn't getting on very well with my reversing and this bloke came up really friendly and he said oh um, you better reverse that right especially on film uh, let me do it for you and I said no it's okay I'll do it you know perfectly good nature just as if to say I'm, I'm, I'll do it myself you know I can manage and um, and then he went oh yeah eventually and off he went and then um, in the end I had to get somebody else to do it because I was right flustered and then he came and started oh and, he, and while it was being reversed he was laughing at me with all these other blokes um, as if to say oh, look at that stupid girl and um, and then he came up and he said before I had a chance to shut the gate if you don't shut the gate I'm going to crash um, if you want to do things yourself then do them properly um, and if you don't shut this gate you'll have sheep all over the yard um, just trying to find fault with me really I'll just see if this lorry is going to get past or not and I thought that was really rude and laughing at me and then just picking on me and not being helpful and I got my sheep unloaded and um, I told him to stop being so bloody rude to his customers and um, and his attitude was just rubbish and he's, he just started shouting back and when we had this massive slagging match it was terrible and um, and then I went and complained to the boss and it just pisses me off but, you know, I did all that myself, I spent the whole day yesterday getting these sheep ready all by myself. Um, managed to get to Castle Douglas on a sheet of ice. And then some bloke and all his friends laugh at me because they think I can't manage because I'm some little girly. <sighs> Pissed me off. Is that enough? I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Mark will have a fit up crying on the film. <laughs> Are you happy with the dress? Oh yes, I'm so happy with this dress, Cinderella's dress. Oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. What do you think? Isn't that fab? Yeah. 50 quid! It's good for a... It's good for a pantomime, yeah? Oh, she looks gorgeous! Are you filming her? <laughs> Meet Mark, the most romantic husband on the planet. Very good, very good, Matthew. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. In our preparation. Come on, let's get on. Mm. Oh, she looks beautiful. Away. Um, 
lady and her husband that are coming today have got a five-star bed and breakfast in Yorkshire. So I feel a little bit under pressure to, um, to impress with my lowly holiday houses. Um, Right, should we go? These are the holiday houses, honey house and milk house. This is milk house, which we converted from the old farmsteading. This was the milking buyer. My dad had a dairy until the early 70s. So, little welcome pack. And um, I still need to get some little soaps and, and whatnot as well. Shall I wait for you here? You could wait, yeah. Good fox, a dead one. She probably didn't do as much, my mum, as me. Really? She had one wee girl and she did the farm. Uh -huh. And she worked hard, but she didn't, didn't direct plays and she didn't do degrees and she didn't, yeah, have three children. Yeah. So. And then you went away as well for a bit. Yeah. If I don't keep on top of it, I'll just drown. It's a bit rotten in there. Not very nice. It's very smelly. Yep, you're very smelly. Antiseptic. If you pull it that way, uh -huh. it should work. Yeah? Okay. Just the other way, you, you feel that. Mm -hmm. When you look down, you can see a slot and a circular section. And the thing has to be in the slot and not in the circular section. Circular section means up, uh -huh. and when it slips out into the slot, mm -hmm. then it can go up. Okay. And then you have to secure the sides again. Close it. Side first. In. Mm -hmm. And shut. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Queen of Württemberg. He says he's not a royalist, but he's got a nice picture of the King and Queen of Württemberg on the wall. So 
So there we have it. These are the three generations of my family before me. Um, Great grandpa, John Ray, grandpa Tom, and my dad Dennis and my mum Grace. And funnily enough, old John and his wife, Mary McClelland, had, I think, six sons and two daughters, and only one of those sons produced any children at all, and that was uh, Tom. Uh, the daughters had lots and lots, but there was only one Ray man, which was so important to have the name and, and the boy. Um, so that was my dad. And, uh, you know, the chances of me being here at all are, you know, it's, it's nearly impossible out of all those sons and all the children they could have potentially had, but they didn't. And then my dad just produced one wee girl, so that's why I'm here. Usually it's the boy. Um, so I'm very lucky. the road back from Kukubri, back to Barcloy. I had to drive two of my children to school this morning because we missed the bus. Um, it happens quite a lot. Hannah, she's really good. She gets up, she always gets on the bus, but the other two are really difficult to get up in the morning, a bit like me. Um, right. Um, let me see. I'm really glad to be back. It's five and a half years and uh, but we we always intended to, to come back I think Mark initially when we met one of the first things he said to me was I want to live in Scotland um, so we kind of assumed we'd live in Scotland um, but it didn't really work um, Mark's English wasn't too great I mean he's very very skilled but he wasn't, probably didn't have the confidence or the language to persuade people to employ him, so he, he didn't um, have much luck finding work in Scotland. Um, so we decided to go back to Germany, had Hannah in Scotland, and then a month later moved to Germany. And we were there for a while, and Mark worked as a civil engineer, building roads there. And, but I always, always had a hankering to come home because well, it's just, I just think it's lovely here and it's, and um, we've got such a lovely place to live. And my dad was getting older and uh, not really managing the farm very well and buildings were falling down and he'd retired and there was no stock on the land. So um, we decided to come back um, and we came back in 2004 and we started with the um, conversion of the holiday houses because Mark being in civil engineering, building, that's what, what he was familiar with. So it was a good bridge in between civil engineering and farming to convert the farmsteading. So that was good. <clears throat> and then we experimented with various types of farming. We went and looked at goat farms, we looked at deer farms, we looked at all sorts of things. and eventually just decided to get some sheep um, while doing other things like uh, we tried to establish a vegetable box scheme for a while but that didn't work. I'll talk about that later in the polytunnel. Um, so I'm just really happy to be back back home. 
I think it's lovely. I think it's a great life. My eldest daughter thinks it's rubbish. She'd rather be in Germany, but that's what she she knew until she was five and a half. So to her, that's home. So I expect as soon as she can go, she'll go go back there. No, 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 no. You're not going tonight. Are you stuck? Oh, that's very silly. That is very silly. Horrible, really, just deciding who's going to die next. I don't really enjoy it. But I suppose if you eat meat, then um, that's where it comes from. Reading. And let's have a look at you. Let's have a look at you. You look fat. Come on. Girl Sophie. I think that's my dad in there, and my mum must be here. Because that's, you can't see that anymore, it's seamless, because she's been in there for 15 years. And the stone used to be there. And then when my dad died, it got moved, so it's in between them. And that's fresher, you can see where that's been dug up and put back. So that's my dad in there. God, I don't fancy being in there. Can't be very nice. You give that to the guy, mm -hmm. the loading dog. I'll sign to you. Mm -hmm. And it's 28. Mm -hmm. and then he'll take the top two mm -hmm. and leave you with the uh, the red one mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. You bring everything back here, yeah? mm -hmm. not that and not these. Mm -hmm. Somebody stops you, this is your transport document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have got a license for that. Mm -hmm. Just unloaded that whole load without any problem at all. I can't believe it. Natural born farmer S. Mark's going to be impressed, I think. Mark's going to be very impressed. It's there. <laughs> I 
think it, it might help making an appearance with your lambs. I think it helps because people think, oh, you know, they really care, you know, about their their work and their sheep and 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 you can also look at the farmer and you know if the farmer's a bit scruffy and and you know looks like he's on drugs and probably you don't want to buy them um, but if he or she looks quite smart and quite you know professional then not that I'm very smart or professional <laughs> then you might want to buy them I don't want to look too pleased with myself. <laughs> well, that went really well, actually. Um, 70 pounds average for each lamb, which is very good. And uh, the guy said down there when some of them were coming up, oh, there's some weight, those lambs, you know, they're really heavy, so they must have been good. So I'm quite pleased. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 